I love that song. Nice. Get away for the weekend. <laughs> Lovely. You know, so now it's time for our spotlight where we're going to talk about finding wealth in health, wellness and nature. And, you know, in a McKinsey uh, study of consumers in April 2021, 79% of consumers said that they believe that wellness is important and that 42% actually consider it a top priority. And basically the report estimates that the global wellness market is valued at 1.5 trillion with annual growth of 5 to 10%. And it identifies three trends in wellness, self-care, mm-hmm. digital health, and e-commerce. So let's find out how the two of you, Mira Barin from Sentosa Development Corporation and Lim Wee Kim, who's Assistant Vice President for Business Innovation at Resorts World, you know, how you've adapted to the changing trends. And so to begin with, I want to share a chart from the McKinsey study, basically, that defines what wellness constitutes in consumers' views. And there are like six tracks here, which is really good in terms of, you know, putting this into context, right? But I want to start off with a personal uh, question. So, Mira, (laughs) how have you been keeping fit during this period? What have you been doing (laughs) for yourself and spoiling yourself during this period? Well, for me, I think uh, it's it's really going back to basics. Um, You know, doing something that I've been meaning to do, procrastinating to do, uh, really focusing on better health and uh, better sleep, really. So specifically, just simple things like getting myself a fitness tracker that suits my lifestyle. Uh, yeah, like this, I like what I'm wearing. <laughs> um, uh, monitoring for uh, better quality of sleep. Uh, and recently, I've actually incorporated a, a, a sugar monitoring device uh, to just be wow. more cognizant of how food actually affect my overall health. Wow, this really sort of goes into the trend of, you know, self-care, you yes. know, self-care and digital health, right? So, Mwikim, what about, what about you? For me, um, I started doing simple meditation. Uh, in fact, I do more of breeze walking at Botanic Gardens as well. In fact, I should actually try to do more of Sentosa Trails. Okay, yeah. and the Sentosa Trails. Yes, that's right. For me, you know, what I enjoy most is actually just being able to dress up. <laughs> yes, you two look really great because we've all been having a lot of Zoom calls at home and it's so great to see you on stage looking so gorgeous and dressing up. It's just such a nice, simple pleasure of wellness, actually. That's right. <laughs> so now, Mira, let's go to, to your research because I know you've done a lot of research because you had to kind of adjust to a totally local market the past 18 months. You know? So what is your research telling you about Singaporeans' perception of leisure experiences and, and, and the part that health and wetness, uh, wellness plays in particular? Right. So in a survey conducted by, by Sentosa last year, we found that 91% of uh, respondents um, actually cited mental well-being as the key motivation for them to actually seek leisure experiences, relaxation, and just distressing uh, overall. Um, what's happening, what we are seeing is really homes are no longer a sanctuary. It's become a multi-dimensional space where you work, you live, you socialize, you entertain. Hence, I think people are really looking for <laughs> outlets, right, to venture out. Yeah. Um, and we feel that uh, Sentosa, as an island getaway, is uh, a unique uh, presents itself as a unique uh, destination to meet this need. Right. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? You know how it's changed our perception of home. Right. You know, you used to say home was your castle. You know, and yeah. now it's a home has become a bit of a everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about what about for for you, um, we came like you know. W- Using this find, I mean, no, Mira, let's stick with you because you, you, you found these findings, right? So how did you then create the experiences that would feed this consumer desires? Yeah, I mean, I think Sentosa um, is known to many um, with our attractions, um, our hotels, as well as our dining establishments. But uh, we also have many natural gems uh, that, that, that you can discover. Um, and, and we basically have been really um, encouraging locals to discover these natural gems. So, for example, we found that um, many people are not aware that there are actually natural trails uh, on Sentosa. So there's uh, 
uh, India and uh, coastal that's what, trails. That's what Mwikin exactly. said that she wanted to discover, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So when we got talking, it's like it's just, just behind Resort World Sentosa and she needs to, to, to discover Local it. Local discoveries, yeah. Yeah, so that's one. Uh, but we've also actually used digital as a platform to kind of like, you know, induce these experiences for our guests uh, just from the comfort of their own homes. Um, specifically, we've leveraged Instagram story for sunset therapy. Um, we've also launched uh, some wellness tunes. So we have now two different playlists inspired by the nature of Sentosa on our Spotify channel. So multi-sensory uh, virtual events, right? I mean, that's the, the thing about virtual now is, for example, we're sitting here and we're bringing Singapore to people's homes and, and, and living rooms, you know, so that's the beauty of, of virtual. I mean, as much, it's nice to have you on stage with us <laughs> physically. Though. Now, Mwikim, I mean, resorts, walls, and those are huge, huge space to play with, you know. So, uh, I mean, we heard a little bit from Shayin just now, you know, but how are you thinking, rethinking some of the products, you know, for, for the new consumer? Mm. I think for the new consumers these days, they really want a place where they can actually have a full relaxation and be able to distress. So in Resort World, with its big space, it's definitely an ideal location for people to uh, get away from the city life and enjoy the tranquility of what the resorts have to offer. Yeah. So in fact, right now, we are open to forge um, partnerships in the area of the wellness aspects. Yeah. So we understand that actually consumers these days have a better understanding of uh, preventative um, health. So we find that there's an opportunity for us to serve their needs further. So we are looking for partners who can actually offer that kind of wellness options. Like, like for example, what kind of partners specifically are you looking at? Um, we are looking at partners who could also offer um, elements like the TCM, the traditional, traditional Chinese, Chinese medicine. Okay. Yeah, and also partners whom we can work closely together to create an ecosystem of the wellness programs. Yeah. Right. Also, you, you talked about sort of the pleasure, you know, yes. the, the, you know, right now you say, you know, the homes have kind of like morphed into different mm. spaces, but so has business travel or leisure travel, right? It's all kind of in one now. Right. And, and you are also creating products for sort of the business leisure customer. Yes, okay. definitely. This is a very important and raising uh, customer segments that we are looking into. Uh, in fact, Resort World Sentosa, we do have already a diverse options for this group of people. Uh, such as accommodations in our beach villas, you know, and suites that attach with the pool, which people can actually uh, do a quick chill out at the end after a long, long... Yeah, meeting. and as, as Shang was saying, that people are actually prepared to pay a lot more for this sort of uh, premium premium experiences. So let's talk about, you know, one, one thing that, you know, you feel has done exceptionally well, that surprised you. Okay, so one good example is actually our uh, patty, patty uh, dive course. In fact, um, it has been sold out throughout the end of the year. So basically, you actually once um, attend a three days uh, program, after which they can actually dive into our ocean uh, habitat. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I, I heard from my friends working at Paddy too that, you know, diving has been a big thing during this period too and people are just taking the time and the opportunity at home to take up diving, you know, That's whether right. in, in China it's huge growth in, in, yeah. in diving. You can imagine yourself immersed, you know, surrounded with 40,000 wow. of marine lives, animals. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Mira, I mean, what about you? Can you cite like three products that you've in, and name one that's done exceptionally well? Okay. Um, so, last year, we launched our landmark campaign to encourage uh, locals to make time for holidays. And we launched 50 uh, new offerings. Um, I think with the businesses on the island, we've uh, worked on uh, many programs. So one of which is what we call the Sentosa Insider Tours. Um, and specifically here, the focus is a little bit different to bring uh, different experiences uh, to let our guests uh, experience the inner workings of an attraction um, and have hands-on experiences. So Madam Tussauds Singapore actually launched uh, um, Behind the Magic uh, Tour where uh, guests will have the opportunity to take a hand as uh, uh, hand in hand with the wax artist and do some wax painting. Can they, can they do a wax figure of themselves? 
That I think will take quite some time, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe version 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> so that that has done uh, very well. Uh, we also actually uh, resume our very popular uh, yoga by the beach, but this time with a meal. So uh, uh, <laughs> participants a can actually meal, I would assume. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so participants can have yoga by the beach and you know uh, get a breakfast set at uh, Ola Beach Club, for example. Okay. So these are examples of uh, some programs that we rolled out with okay. our island partners. So which was the one that took you by surprise? Uh, you know that unexpected. I think it's the 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 behind uh, the magic with the wax artist because you know I remember the discussions uh, together with Madam Tussat. You know how would uh, the local uh, audience uh, react to this, and we are pleasantly surprised that uh, that you know a lot of uh, them actually participated and actually bought the tours. Right. So, so I mean, as we heard from Michael just now, you know, with the cruising market, there's definitely been a change in customer demographics, and that impacts how you think about marketing, how you think about product, and all that. So, how how are the changes in consumer demographics affecting, influencing the way you think about products or marketing? Yeah. Um, well, for us, I think what we see, families with young kids continues to be the big target segment for us because I think parents continue to want to find things for their kids to do. But interestingly, in the survey, uh, the same survey, we found that 56% of people who are working from home are not taking their annual leave. Hence, this is, this is not good for mental well-being, right? So we saw this as an opportunity to encourage parents to pause, uh, take a break, and, and spend their time with their family on Sentosa. So we've launched a couple of campaigns like Kids Play Free campaigns, where with paying adults, kids can enjoy the experiences on Sentosa. Okay. But we also noticed actually a sort of a new group of consumers. So maybe a bit older working adult, where uh, these are the group of consumers or guests who probably haven't been to Sentosa for the past 12 months, let's say, but have actually visited Sentosa, likely you know, due to uh, you know, the need to discover and mental well-being, right. uh, as well as, I guess, the new offerings that we have pushed out. Okay. What about for, for you, Mwikim? How are you thinking about the new customer and how are you anticipating you know, the creation of products and experiences for them? Right. Um, so, in fact, um, we have a... We need a... I think uh, your, your mic is uh, off. Okay, maybe we... we you want to try? Okay. Yeah, I think it's working. It's yeah. Okay. Go yeah. ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so yeah. We, we do actually, since the pandemic, we do see that uh, there's a growth in terms of the domestic um, consumers who wants to get away. So mm. they came to our resorts as well. So we sh see actually a shift from uh, mainly, mostly families to even include um, couples, singles, as well as the uh, business professionals. Yeah, so with these groups, we also tend to, s we, we have to actually create new innovation uh, offerings to them, different kind of programming to, to get them uh, coming back as well. Um, in fact, it, we do notice that there's good um, dining bookings from this group of people. So we wanted to be able to attract them through, recently we do have more offerings in our private um, dining in RWS. Mm. So this is a good place where they can actually come in, especially once the measures have been eased. We hope we are able to host them. Yeah, I mean, one common thread that I'm hearing through the conversations today is how every brand is actually seeing changing customer and new consumer segments. Uh, and it's such a golden opportunity for us, really, you know, to really, I mean, I think from the research that Expedia shared too with Greg, you know, it's like, you know, question of really being, like, we have a lot more data now and then we can be smarter about targeting yeah. very sp specific messages to those customers instead of the previous sort of, this, this period has been good for us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's talk about food, yeah, you know, but I mean, we, let's talk about food because food is clearly a big pillar of wellness and you are clearly very conscious about it with your tracking devices, you I know, <laughs> and as well as sustainability. So food is a big pillar of sustainability. Mm. And, you know, I, I, I wrote an article about Thailand launching an organic food platform to the international traveler. Mm. So they've started an organic tourism movement and basically on that platform, a traveler can find hotels that actually buy from local farmers throughout the country. And I was just wondering with 
an island like Sentosa, and not that we in Singapore we have a lot of farming, but is there a similar initiative in Sentosa to link up your F and B offerings with you know, local produce or farmers in Singapore and beyond. Right, right. Um, definitely, I think we observe the same trend. There's indeed a growing consciousness among guests um, in this regard. Uh, they are more conscious about, you know, the, the ingredients, um, sourcing, as well as, you know, the gar- carbon footprint, that uh, the, the food that are being served. So um, for us, I think where we fel- feel that we can really play a big role is together with you know businesses on uh, on Sentosa uh, and we are really working on uh, a program uh, on that which which we will share much more later on but having said that I would say right now um, there are already herb gardens where you know uh, vegetables and herbs are being used uh, are grown in this garden are being used in the kitchen so for example in Rasa Sentosa Shangri-La even in RWS as well as uh, Sofitel Right, you know, we do have a target in Singapore to get to 30%, uh, you know, uh, local farmed produce right. by 2030, I think. So, so uh, congratulations uh, to Resorts World Sentosa. I think you won an award for sustainability at the Singapore mm-hmm. Tourism Awards just last week. So clearly, it is a big pillar of what you've, you've done here. Uh, uh, you know, like you've made a, quite a lot of investment in it. Do you, you want to share a little bit of that? Yes, definitely. Um, in fact, um, um, there's a lot of effort done throughout this uh, whole journey um, that encompasses many areas, uh, one of which includes, for example, the sustainable procurement uh, practices that we actually um, have with us is important elements throughout the journey. For example, in uh, at the culinary creation at our ocean restaurants, we actually... Um, uh, feature sustainable seafood as well. So um, our um, team has actually established a very comprehensive but very easy to follow guides in terms of supporting them to procure ingredients for ocean restaurants. Okay, so let's let's now talk about nature, right? And I picked out these facts about Singapore and, and Sentosa, which I thought was quite interesting. And, and let's talk about SDC, I know that you've declared carbon neutrality. You know, so talk about how you're thinking about your green spaces. Yeah, yeah. Earlier this year, we've uh, uh, we've declared our ambition to be uh, carbon neutral by 2030, uh, and um, certainly, I think green spaces and open spaces is an important natural asset uh, to Sentosa. And um, while we continue to work to preserve this as part of our island future. We also want to enable guests and make it easy for them to experience uh, nature right now. So, for example, um, we organize guided um, tours uh, to ecological sensitive areas like Tanjong Rimau. So these are the areas where uh, locals or, or guests uh, can't just go venture out on their own, but they, in order for them to experience this, uh, they need to sign up on a guided tour that's organized by Sentosa. Okay. Um, other, I would say, more simple areas, but important, uh, is uh, we've refreshed our interpretive signs on the island, especially on the coastal trail as well as the Imbia Trail. Um, and, and guests can just scan a QR code and learn more about the flora right. fauna that they So we're definitely putting that. in a lot more education element into That's whatever right. people are seeing rather than just seeing, they're kind of learning as well, which is what you're also doing at the Sea Aquarium, which uh, Shrein just now covered a little bit, right? You know, yeah, a couple of new experiences that you've introduced there as well. That's right. right. So um, during the COVID period um, last, last year in October, we actually expanded our Sea Aquarium with additional immersive zone. Mm-hmm. So basically, we actually extend the visitors' um, experience and journey in the aquarium. So starting from themes like uh, rainforest to the coastal terrains up to the very beautiful coral reefs as well. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? We live in an urban city, but now we are really appreciating nature, which <laughs> makes my next question really, really quite interesting because, you know, one theme is uh, nature theme accommodation is very huge right now. And I asked you for your favorite, right? You know, yeah. so this is my favorite. I want to share my favorite, which was kind of a dome that I stayed in in Iceland on a farm. So give us, uh, you know, what is your, what is your favorite uh, <laughs> nature themed accommodation that you've stayed in? Um, not that I've stayed in, but somewhere that I really would like to go. 
and and I really want to go somewhere cold, really, <laughs> Ex- uh, escape this heat. Um, so the the Aurora Domes, you know, okay. in Finland. All right. What about you, Miki? For me, that will be an eco-friendly cabin retreat in actually northern part of Norway. They call it like the Arctic hideaway. No. Yeah, isn't it interesting that we live in tropical places and we're all yearning for the cold because it's always summer here, un- unless you're in an air-conditioned room. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay, rapid fire. The person who has the most interesting job on Sentosa? The Aquarius. Can the you Aquarius. imagine your work um, amongst, you know, working with the sharks and the mentaries? <laughs> wow, okay, yeah, you must keep them very zen. What about you? I think the lifeguards uh, in Sentosa, or what, what we call them, the beach patrol officer, you know, keeping everyone safe, but at the same time, people watching on the beach. <laughs> Especially now. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best nature wellness experience that you've ever had outside Singapore? Um, I think it's, uh, it's one of the uh, treks that I did, uh, uh, mini trek, I'm not a big hiker, uh, uh, in uh, Crete in Greek Island. Okay, now that you're wearing this, you need to go on bigger right. tracks. <laughs> Mwikim, what about you? Yeah, f- for me, it would be um, a family treat that I had actually at Malkut. So we actually do a very simple trail, uh, and that's very spectacular views. Mount Cook in New Zealand. That's right. All right, okay. And then what's the best nature wellness experience that you want to try when you can travel again? Dream. <sighs> Dream. I think out of the world spa experience. So I need to do more research, but I really feel a really long spa vacation. Like a health over farm. Here. Like a health farm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Mickey? For me, that would be riding on a train in Norway. Mm. So I can imagine traveling, uh, enjoying myself, relax, and looking at a very beautiful view. And if I embark on this particular train, I guess it will lead me... F- um, uh, closest to where the Arctic hideaway is. <laughs> <laughs> I can see a very common trend here. So, you know, thank you. Thank you for being part of this panel and I wish you happy holidays. I think we might be able to travel by the end of this year, I hope. And then you can go to the Northern Lights <laughs> and yes. to Norway. Thank you so much for joining us, Mikim and Mira. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you.